Have you ever wondered how we capture images like this, or this, or this? Well, today we're gonna to talk about how we capture these images. We're gonna talk a little bit about positioning, break down a few images. I can't wait. Are you ready? Let's get started. Now, before we jump into the video, very quick plug for the Titan Supporters Club. $2.99 a month gets you a lot of exclusive perks, early access to videos, exclusive teaching, lecture type of videos. We're going to do lots of cool stuff in there. You're going to help support our educational mission, future videos. We really need your support. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Now, let's get to today's lesson. Supercells are rotating thunderstorms. When you take a look at a time lapse of these or a photo of these, you see these incredible, amazing structures. Every supercell is different. Every supercell is different. And I'm telling you, as a photographer, these are my muse. I love storms. I love every type of storm. Monsoon storms, multi-cells, they're all interesting in their own way. But when it comes down to it, my goal every single day I storm chase is to capture a supercell because supercells can look absolutely otherworldly. We're getting to the point with AI where I think honestly, any supercell that looks amazing is going to have people questioning whether it's real or not. By the way, you can always trust we're going to be showing you the real thing when it comes to storms on this channel. That's what we're doing. If we ever don't, it will be labeled, you'll know. But beside all that, let's that's that's a completely different topic. Let's talk about today. Today we're going to break down five shots and then I'm going to talk about a few other general tips so you too can look at look for the right conditions to photograph these incredible supercells. Are you ready? Well, let's go. So the first storm we're going to take a look at, this one is May 29th. 2012. I took this photo in Kingfisher, Oklahoma. There's so much about this photo to break down, right? You have wall cloud right here, updraft base. Look at the structure, the colors, the golden wheat field here. I stopped here because of this contrast between the brown and the golden, like just this beautiful scene right here. What a beautiful scene this is. I absolutely love, love, love this scene for so many reasons. Uh, and one of the things that I definitely did here is that you can see the precip core there to the north. There's, there it is labeled. The precipitation core was well to our north. This storm was pretty LP at this point, and we just positioned south of it. Very easy setup. You can see our position relative to this storm here. And this was just quite honestly a pretty easy storm to photograph throughout its entire life cycle because it remained LP almost the entire time, okay? This was a dream storm moving very slowly, easy to photograph. This is the type of storm that you say, hey, I'm really happy I was here on this day. <laughs> this one's an awesome storm. Look at this. Look at the colors here. Look at that golden just hue across the entire landscape. I caught this storm at sunset. Never leave a storm before sunset. Don't do it. Trust me. You're going to be sorry if you do. When you see a storm at sunset, it will oftentimes do something like this with these beautiful orange, yellow type of hues in the sky with these dark grays where the core is at. You can see here, you can see that's the updraft base. You can see a little bit of a lowering, no risk of a tornado here. This was on June 3rd, I think 2022 in Eastern New Mexico, just outside of Fort Sumner. This uh, storm, yeah, I, I was, I, there were so many different things I wanted to do with this scene. It was really hard to kind of figure out exactly what I want to do. But what I ended up doing is going just beside the road. You know, very cliche people using roads as leading lines, right? Well, I wanted to, ha I had the fence line to the right, the road to the left, and I had this like ditch and these kind of rows on the side of the road. And I just figured all these were leading right down into that dark core. And so I wanted to get that all, that leading line right into this storm, right into that darkness. And honestly, I really love how this shot turned out. I was sitting just to the west of this actually. I was setting uh, to the west looking east. That's why the core looks so dark. Not a typical position I would look for on like the lower plains, but out here on the high plains in New Mexico, this absolutely was where I was at. And what a beautiful shot this is. I mean, look at that, just absolutely stunning colors. <laughs> 
Let's go for something with a little bit of recency bias here, possibly. But this was from May 19th, earlier this spring. Oh my gosh, look at this storm. This storm, I shot this at 12 millimeters. So uh, this is on my Leowa six millimeter lens. It's uh, times it by two on my Micro Four Thirds. And this is what you get right here. Absolutely incredible colors. I, I can't believe it. The colors, the the hues, the, the the contrast, it was just a perfect scene. The storm was basically right overhead. When you're shooting this wide at 12 millimeter, the storm's basically right on top of you. I fell in love, 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 love with this lens this year. Absolutely gorgeous, stunning scene. Uh, you can see the wall cloud there. That's the updraft phase, storm, downdrafts over here. We were setting east of this storm on a north-south highway with no real east-west options. Our only option was to dive south out of here, but I wanted to get up here get as far north as I could to get a view of this updraft, that vault region right there, because when you can get that, when you can just get that in a safe manner, the photographic results are absolutely stunning. You see it right there, absolutely gorgeous shot. So happy I was there for this one. So if I have a recency bias on the last one, this one is like the opposite of that. This was shot way back, we're talking 2009, August 17, 2009. This is a supercell that only a few people saw. Still remains one of the most prolific lightning producers I've ever seen in Geary, Oklahoma. I shot this looking west from the east. You see this beautiful saucer updraft shape. No real chance of a tornado. This storm was pretty small, but there was just constant lightning bolts underneath it. And so those lightning bolts light up the storm precip core there. There's the whole, the whole thing you can tell. This is a photo where you can look at it and you can tell this storm was rotating. Absolutely was beautiful storm. Blue hues, this was right at blue hour just before it got dark. I am so happy to this day. I have photos from this that I just still absolutely love. This is one of them, one of my favorites. Uh, I love how the farm and the back on the foreground there, it's not really the foreground, but on the horizon, looks so tiny compared to the storm, gives a little bit of scale. I like adding some ways to show scale to storms. It shows how, just how big these things are. Massive storm, beautiful scene can't believe I still I still can't believe I got this storm now this one is a Texas Panhandle special this is an LP storm it has that triangle bat wing I don't know how I call it a bat wing type of shape almost looks like a, a b2 bomber or something when you see this you know an updraft is struggling because it's not fully round but you can see the striations makes you you know then that that is definitely uh, a rotating storm I and mean, you can look at it and you can see very easily to see it's rotating absolutely gorgeous colors look at that texture look at the striations look at how gorgeous this looks again those windmills out there on the horizon line the little farm adds a little bit of scale to this image which i really enjoy love the golden field ahead of it golden golds and greens yellows and greens uh, this was just an absolutely fantastic image I captured near Waka, Texas in May of 2018. We're actually looking north at this thing, LP Storm, dropping tennis ball size hell, but it was very small and it was weakening, but still absolutely gorgeous. So some of the things you're going to notice about a lot of these storms, right, is they were pretty isolated. That's the first thing you need to look for when you're looking for beautiful photos of supercells, because to get this crisp air to get that beautiful view of the updraft, you need isolation. You need, need these storms by themselves. So there's not rain from a storm behind it falling in and really like ruining the contrast. For those crisp details, these storms absolutely need to be sitting by themselves and isolated. That's tip one. Uh, another thing that I believe in, this is just my opinion, is that storms after dark can be cool. Don't get me wrong, but by necessity, to shoot after dark, you need to shoot a little bit longer exposure typically, which means you're gonna blur out some of the details. So when you see some of these beautiful striated structured, textured storm structures, those will tend to smooth out after dark. So I believe strongly in shooting before nighttime as much as possible. Now, this is obvious, most people are gonna do this, but I just, I'm not as big of a fan of after dark, for storm structure at least, because I think that that smoothness that gets introduced is just I, I don't like it as much so my next tip is basically more lightning more fun on days with a lot of lightning and it's hard to know what that looks like usually the higher the instability the better your chances that a lot of lightning but that's not always the case uh high plains are notorious for 
having a lot of lightning with a little bit of cape. So just know that if you have a lot of lightning, those photographs get a lot more fun, right? I don't think it's necessary to have a great supercell photo with lightning. Don't think that's necessary. But I do think when lightning is happening and it's everywhere, it's a lot more fun. The thing I do is I make sure I check the lightning map and where my position is. Uh, and if where I want to be with the storm has a lot of lightning strikes, I probably don't go there. It's harder to capture stuff when you're setting in the car, right? I, I'm very much safety. Don't get struck by lightning. It's scary. Random bolts of electricity happening everywhere at random, right? Don't get struck by lightning. But also, I make sure that where I'm going doesn't have a lot of lightning strikes on radar. It seems kind of obvious, but that's kind of how I make sure that I can work with the scene. I can move around. Because you can always set a camera up and let it go and time lapse, do all that stuff. And it might capture stuff, but I also like moving stuff around. So be careful with lightning. Now, here's one that people don't fully appreciate, but low LCLs, low temperature dew point depressions. Tornado City, right? Everyone gets excited about that for tornadoes, but the lower the cloud bases are, the more grungy storms are going to look a lot of times. And that's not good. It's not good for photography to have a storm that you can't really see the details of the updraft. When you have low LCLs, it usually means you have a very very moist atmosphere that's going to add haze to a scene it's also going to have make it a lot more grungy a lot harder to see detail even underneath the storm so i look for those lcls to be at those you know temperature dew point depressions to be 10 to 20 at least but 20 to 30 more ideally for really really good storm structure now this next piece is a little bit more technical but when you look at a sounding and anytime you see the red and the green really close together that use that indicates saturated air clouds etc for storm structure to get a shot like this where you see the storm with no low clouds around you need something that looks like this with that green line and that red line far enough apart to where you don't have to worry about stratus just coming in and ruining the fun because when you're shooting a storm and all of a sudden there's these, this low cloud deck that surrounds it, especially toward evening, blue hour, when things look good, it's not good. So you want drier, low levels, if at all possible. That's going to help you. Or just drier column, not even just low levels. Drier column throughout, uh, that's going to help these storms really pop. Photo details really show up. Because the more moisture there is, the more haze is going to be, the less detail, etc. So you want a drier environment when it comes to storms, as dry as you can get while still having enough instability and such to get big time severe storms. So again, look for dew point depressions, 10 to 30. So to review, pretty easy, right? Stay safe out there. I think that the best situations are isolated storms with good dew point depressions, drier air masses, and shooting from the east and south-ish are the best places. It's somewhere in that east, northeast to the southeast range. That's a good spot for these storms. Somewhere where you're really able to see those updraft details. That's important. Now, the next thing that I really think is important is that you subscribe. Subscribe to this channel, like this video. And by the way, another thing you need to do, if you've been watching us for a long time, there's a way for you to support this channel. That means becoming a member of the Titan Supporters Club, $2.99 a month, lets you get early access to videos. It also helps us out, let you get input in the future videos. You get all kinds of stuff, some exclusive perks coming your way. This is just the ground floor, but any support we can get, we appreciate it. And hey, remember, weather, weather's for everybody. That includes you. We'll see you next time.